Hey there everybody, how are you doing today? This is Alec, I come to you with another product opening. Today, I've got something that I've been anticipating for some time. I finally made the jump, the leap, the upgrade to the Logitech 910, G910 Orion Spark. It's a full RGB, LED, light up keyboard, uh, mechanical keyboard it comes with the uh, Romer G switches and uh, it's a type of switch they made proprietary towards Logitech it's uh, meant to be similar to the um, the cherry browns if you will um, for those who don't know the cherry reds are kind of more clicky and the cherry browns are much more tactile feed so you can actually feel the click uh, but not necessarily have to hear it and that's kind of what I was looking for here is something that's a little bit more subtle when I'm playing so I don't have to hear a bunch of clacking and clicking it's really nice when you're typing but not so nice when you're playing the game all the time and just constantly clicking around. Now, I just bought this off of Amazon, and I know in the past, when it first came out, there was a big promotion for it, and they were talking about getting the Division. Um, so I didn't actually expect uh, to get the Division with this, but uh, it's got this big sticker on there, and it says the Division included with purchase. So, um, I don't know, maybe I'll get it too. So that's pretty cool. That's a Tom Clancy game. It just came out. Uh, here's the back side of it. Uh, the box is unopened still. A um, couple different things, reasons why I got Logitech. Number one, I love the brand. Logitech is kind of my brand. I love it. I've got uh, an old Logitech uh, wireless mouse. I do use the uh, the headset. Um, I do appreciate Logitech. I do have the Razer mouse pad though. Um, but who knows in the future. I do enjoy uh, Logitech quality. And I just kind of think that they um, they tend to do a little bit more research for the players um, in their products. Now, um, one of the things that uh, that shows me that is the actual uh, macro keys, right? So you have nine programmable macro keys, and you've got three different presets here. So you actually can have 27 different settings if you like. Um, it's really nice. Uh, game that I play is uh, CS:GO. You can actually program your uh, keys to to make your instant buys. So you don't got to constantly hit the B key and all and do your buys and everything. I know you can do that with your F1s um, just by opening up the um, the window, but uh, it makes the things a little bit easier when everything's just in the macro. Um, you can drop bomb, you can do all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, I spoke earlier about the differences in Romer G versus Cherry. Romer G is supposed to be faster. It's supposed to be 25% faster because it's got a uh, less of a, um, a button push or trigger pull, if you will, when you're playing. So it's supposed to be a little bit quicker. Of course, um, as with any of the later kind of mechanical keyboards, anti-ghosting, that means that once you push the button, it's not going to go on... Um, have kind of a trailing effect. It's kind of actually instant uh, feedback. And um, another kind of cool thing to it is the uh, actual integration with uh, your computer system sound system. Now, I actually am replacing a G110 that's old, and it actually has this this piece here. Um, and I found this to be awesome. So I got the, the mute button, I've got the up and down kind of uh, uh, volume, uh, forward button, play button, all that kind of cool stuff. One thing that is missing um, with the Orion Spark is that in the older keyboards they actually included a USB and I know a lot of other um, keyboard types actually have a USB, a pass-through USB uh, port there and does not have on the Orion Spark. That is the, um, that was a big problem for me because I actually do use that USB port uh, to plug in my headphones to and for uh, muting but I'll get around it uh, by getting a um, uh, an outlet, uh, having a four pass-through. Mm -hmm. They did replace it with this kind of this dock here, the ARX dock. I'm not really sold in this dock thing. It's really made to house your iPhone. You can stick your iPhone in there, and it's meant to uh, give you a the settings, kind of like how the more advanced keyboards had. They actually had like a little LCD um, screen there, and now you can actually um, upload an app. You can have all your little programmable pieces of information there, and as you're playing, you can find out your things like your uh, your computer uh, uh, speed and delays and and what's doing. Um, that's great, fine, um, but uh, I don't know if that's something that I'll use or not. Now, I did not open this box beforehand. Maybe I should have tried to, but I'm going to give you guys the full experience just like I'm opening it. Um, I did want to make sure I mention that there is something else on here too, the keys. Wow. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. Look at this. 
That's the thing about uh, Logitech is they really make their products, that first presentation, just kind of stand out. This is really nicely packed. But that is, it's amazing. Maybe it's just because I <laughs> enjoy the company so much. So you can actually hear a little bit of clicking, but you definitely know when the buttons are being pushed. Now, um, in the box itself, it actually comes with a kind of a smaller palm rest on the bottom here, and you can actually replace that with a larger palm rest here that's actually included in the box. It's got like the you know the quick startup kit, but really, I mean, let's get real. It's got a long cord, six foot. You just plug this into the back of your computer, and you're up and running. Cool box, of course that kind of standout light blue and black that Logitech loves to have. Here's this, uh, the actual um, media controls. There's actually a, a couple buttons here. I think this is for um, whether you want the illumination, yeah it is. And this is actually for gamer mode or non-gamer mode. Now, I did actually have this on my other keyboard also, it's kind of a switch. What it does basically, it turns on and off the Windows key because as, as most of you guys know when you're playing, if you hit that Windows key, you're gonna tab out of your game and you're just you're just dead, just forget it if you accidentally hit that button. So you can actually turn that off by, um, by flicking that switch on. Uh, wow. Seems really sturdy, really nice. Here's this uh, dock that I was talking about. Now, a couple things with this dock. Uh, right off the bat, I know a lot of people are wondering whether this is actually a iPhone dock. Well, it's not. It's not. It's just got little plastic um, pieces here that actually will fit into the charging area of your iPhone. And it just holds the phone. That's all it is, just a little thing that holds the phone. I I'm not really happy about this. I would much rather have a USB port back here and have that uh, headphone on and off. For some reason, Logitech's always been the case, always been um, fascinated by having an LCD screen and kind of give you stats in your computer. Um, that's great, but I kind of feel like that's also draining uh, some resources as well, and you'd rather direct those to the computer. Um, I don't know. I could be totally wrong about it, but that's just my opinion. Um, you have your feet up and down also, so you can actually have it at an angle like you're supposed to have it when you're kind of working with it. Um, again, here are the, the, the macro, macro keys. Oh, it's absolutely wonderful. Really kind of sturdy. You can kind of feel like everything is really well placed. Um, now, another thing to look at here. When looking at the G910, one thing that sets it aside from other keyboards is the actual manner in which the keys are made. Do you actually see that they're kind of divoted and they actually have like a, um, a surrounding kind of wall, if you will? It's how you kind of made it in an angle. Well, it's made like that, so when you're actually gaming, you can actually feel everything, kind of hit everything that you want to hit. So, some of these are actually made to where the slants are are easier for you to understand and kind of do what you mean to do, rather than kind of missing it and just kind of hitting anything you want. Some people love it, some people don't like it. I have not actually heard of anybody who doesn't like it, but I have read about it. Um, if you do want, you can actually change all the keys. They actually have that availability. Uh, if you like the keyboard, they like the functionality, and if you want to uh, replace the keys, you can do that. Logitech sells um, another set of keys, of course, at a price, right? I think it's like 40 bucks, actually, for me to replace all the keys but it'll give you the whole quality and functionality of the keyboard and maybe remove the part that you don't like. Um, now this is something that is really important too, to identify. If I can get this key off, there you go. Here's the actual Romer G uh, key switch and actuation. If you notice, the LED is actually in the middle of the key. It's actually in the middle. So that's uh, that's really different in, in, in a lot of ways because the actual LED kind of the, the, um, the illumination is going to come through the, the key itself, come through the key. And so it doesn't, it's not just about the backlighting uh, the underneath of the, uh, the key where it's actually going up and reflecting down like a, like, a, like the uh, Black Widow does. But I'll put that on there later on. But other things. But um, it's actually illuminating straight through. It's supposed to be brighter, it's supposed to be nicer. Of course, this is full RGB, and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I'm programming it, the lights and everything. You can do that whole rainbow effect, the spectrum effect, it's like star effect and everything. Personally, I like to have that for the show and the flashy. Maybe some people like that, but when I'm playing my game, I'm gonna have the, the keys that I actually use light up and just be um, there for me in case I am playing uh, without light and every once in a while that does happen. So anyways, uh, so far so good. 
This thing is great. It's uh. I think it retails 199 or something or 179 or well, I think it's 179 if I remember right. Um, but uh, if you get through Amazon, it's like 139, and I actually think it goes on sale now and again. Um, if if I recall properly, it was like on sale at the end of 2015, and I think I think it was like 100, 120, and you got uh, free access to the division. Which made it even better because, of course, that's like a 60 buck game in itself. So you're getting an actual keyboard for like 60 bucks, 70 bucks if you actually were going to buy that game in the first place. So that's really nice. Um, wow, this is, this is a really, really cool keyboard. You can really feel uh, the difference between that and kind of the older type of keyboards, like the G9, G110 is the one I replaced. G110 was wonderful only because it had um, tons of macro switches. Just, I mean, I had two rows um, and uh, it was great for things like well when you had three so I could actually do 36 different combinations there um, but it and it did have the uh, the gaming switch there so I could turn on and off but um, the actuation here is quite a bit longer and it's not uh, mechanical so I just kind of wanted to go with the mechanical get a little bit faster get a little bit cleaner and upgrade my keyboard that's what I did I'm gonna go ahead and show the um, the program in itself and get some illumination going after, after I set this all up and um, I'll come back. Take care guys. Okay Thanks. everybody, <clears throat> so we're back and um, we're taking a look at the software that the, um, the Orion G910 um, has. It's the uh, Logitech gaming software. Anybody who's using Logitech items will kind of already have this downloaded. Um, I use it for my headphones, I use it for my mouse, um, and it's very, very simple to use. It's definitely one of the uh, the key features to using Logitech is because their program is so incredibly uh, intuitive and very easy to, to use. So we have a bunch of different keys down here on the very bottom. Don't let scare you. As soon as you plug it in and bring this thing up, you're going to be able to switch over to your devices that you want to see and play with. So. We have, uh, here's the G key where you can do your programming. Um, I've got a couple different games here that I use it for and it's got some commands here and all you do is you just sit there and you just grab it and you just click and drag it. So you, as you can see here, uh, we're talking about those uh, macro keys. All I really use right now, programmed in, that I've had a chance to play with is I use my smoke on G4 and I use my flashbang on G5. And what it does is I can just kind of reach over there and hit it with my pinky. Um, now I know that uh, there's other keys. I think it's Z, X, or C or something like that. It's using that as well. But um, I actually kind of like to have it separated on the bottom. Um, another thing that I know that you can do in CSGO and that I've done in the past is I've programmed my F1 key for specific buys. But uh, one thing that you'll notice is that when you're buying um, your specific guns, sometimes you don't have enough money, you need to buy, uh, you like to buy your, uh, say your uh, AK-47, maybe a smoke, couple flashes, but maybe you don't have all the money, so you just want to buy a smoke this time, or maybe you're in a situation where you want to get the AK-47 and only one flash, and you can program all these things in the macros and do all your little specific um, buys um, based on the actual key strokes rather than uh, your uh, toggling your, your uh, main monitor inside the CSGO itself. It kind of makes things a little bit nicer, but for now, all I have programmed in here is just a smoke and flash, but you can do all different kinds of things here um, if you wanted to. And of course, naturally, you're able to program a bunch of other stuff here, but that's what I'm using right now. Um, and it's quite simply, you just, you know, you can assign a new command, use one of these generic commands if you want to. It's, it's really simple. One thing that's really cool also is that as you switch over to different games, you can have the macros switch over also. So it'll automatically sense if you're playing CSGO or Assassin's Creed, in my case. Um, and when Assassin's Creed loads up, then these macros automatically change. This is very simple and intuitive. Um, now, on to the fun stuff, I guess you can say. Uh, you can also disable keys. You can also play with it. This is actually the, um, the game control key. We were speaking about that before. It's a key right up here in the corner. When you click it, or uh, when you have it on, it will disable keys. And primarily, you want to disable your Windows keys. Some people don't like to have other keys um, uh, on as well, but uh, those are the only ones really. Uh, I don't like to have the uh, uh, Windows key or the menu key here, so those are disabled on both sides. 
Fun stuff now, we're looking at lighting modes. As you can see, hopefully you can capture it on the, the camera here, all these different colors and everything. I just kind of keep it like this. I don't really like to have it flashing too much when I'm uh, when I'm not playing games, only because it's kind of a distraction to, to me working. I'm working on you know multiple monitors and this, this keyboard is kind of flashing all over the place. So I kind of like to keep it in a static state, but I do like to see some colors there because it's you know, it's kind of nifty. You can see your, your logo here, your logo here, and you can switch it up any way you want to, really. You have all these different lighting modes here in the bottom, and you can make it static, you can make it a single layer, you can add any color you want to, you can change it, you can have your different lighting zones here if you want to, and change it like that. You can also do things like a pre program things like active key, key, active game keys. So like we were showing before, I was in CSGO, and so specific CSGO keys are lighted in the, like a light blue, and the keys that are not operating are in, a, in the orange in this case. Um, so you know that you're working from Q to T here, A to G, and Shift to V, uh, all working in CSGO, and those are just kind of uh, colors you can play with. Uh, you can change the colors anytime and uh, you know that's pretty easy to see. You can also change the brightness which is really neat, uh, internal lighting and stuff and then of course the fun stuff right. When you click on this button over here your your keyboard just starts pulsing. <laughs> All these different things. Actually, it's breathing. Sorry. Uh, you can have a fixed color, of course. You can have it breathe. You can have all these different effects. You can change the speed of your breathing if you want to. Make it really fast. Oh, I don't breathe really fast. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can change it like that if you want. You can have a star effect where all the different keys are kind of lighting up in different areas. You can have a uh, sky color changed uh, so it you know, changes colors. Only specific ones are, are going. Um, all different kinds of fun things if you want to play with. Uh, color cycle, you can change those colors as much as you like, have it kind of wave across, and again, you can go slower, faster. Uh, color wave, of course. People like it, lo love it, right? This is what you pay for, uh, these RGB keyboards for. You have a star effect. One thing that's cool with the Logitech is that you can actually go horizontal, so it's kind of going up and around. You can go up and down in a vertical pattern, and uh, you can also send her out, which is kind of what I prefer. Again, it's a bit of a distraction. I'm hoping you can catch it onto the uh, the keyboard cam here. But um, I'm gonna tell you, it is vibrant. Even though this this camera might not be able to make it out and do it justice, it is very well lit. You can easily see the different colors. You can distinguish them. And that was a really, really important attribute to me is that I don't just want to change from yellow to red. I want to be able to tell that there's multiple colors. It goes from you know pink to purple to red to yellow to green. I want to see a distinct variety of colors coming from the keyboard, and that's what I was really concerned about because you know they can describe that there's going to be 88 million colors or however many million of colors. Does not matter? Any more than a, you know a couple hundred? That's fine. I want to be able to tell a difference. I don't want to just to say yeah, it went from yellow to green. Can't you tell? No, I want to be able to see it um, and, and not have to wonder if it's actually changing colors um, because it doesn't matter to me um, if there's any more than a couple hundred because I'm just no way I'm going to see it anyways. Uh, now key press, so this is kind of an interesting one. So we've got all red and as you're pushing the keys here, hopefully you can see again too, is that the actual keys are kind of lighting up, right? You can see what you're pressing. That's, that's kind of neat for, for typing because it actually goes from the color you're going to back down. It's kind of fading across until it catches up to the other keys. And you can see uh, almost like a trail, if you will, of it, of it going through. Okay, that's cool and all. <laughs> but uh, these are kind of some of the fun things. I personally keep it in the lighting mode in the zone. I actually uh, like to see my F keys all in purple. I like to see the uh, the... the G or the Logitech symbols really uh, shining a different color away from everything else and then I don't know why um, I really like to see WASD always lit in a different color because it's just a constant reminder of about uh, hey you should be playing uh, work <laughs> work less play more I guess um, now here we go, this is where we can actually do input. You can actually uh, uh, start this and then what we'll actually do is it'll tell you which keys you're pressing the most. Um, and uh, I don't know why anybody really needs to see this, but in case you are wondering which keys are, are the most used, so you can color them differently, you can do that here and, and you can get a heat map and also you can get duration heat map. So obviously in, in a game like CSGO, for those who are playing it, 
or any other kind of very, actually first person shooters, your WASD keys are the ones you're pressing the most. And you're pressing the longest because it's, a, it's the four keys that you're constantly using. Um, along with that, you're probably using some of your different, uh, I don't even know what you'd use after six to zero, but uh, one through five is really changing or cycling through your different weapons. So you're constantly doing these things. You're doing uh, R to go and reload and F maybe to look at your gun and, and crouching and jumping and all these kind of things. All right, that's really cool. But you can actually color them differently if you choose to. And you can see, um, you can light them differently in case you're playing at night or something. So, there's that. Um, what else is there? Really, that's it. And that's about as easy as it gets. Um, assigning your macros. Uh, making sure you have uh, um, them all set what they are. And then also your default or your removal keys, which you're going to actually remove from being able to be uh, um, used when the gaming button's pushed. Your fun low lighting time. Your lighting modes. Your color uh, changes and your um, your press heat maps, kind of your statistics of the game. Statistics of your keyboard, sorry. Um, that's it for now, I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're gonna go and show you the last piece of coolness with the keyboard, if you will, last uh, um, asset. You have yourself your little dock here and uh, it basically in the very bottom here you have like the little connectors there where it's almost like a charging stand um, and uh, your phone app. So you download that app that we were talking about before and your phone just kind of sits in the cradle there instead of having the LCD display built into the keyboard. That's great. Okay, so we have a little plastic tray pulling out. I don't know. I don't know why they did that instead of a USB connector. I'd rather see a USB connector in there. Um, but I don't know. What? Whatever. They say, probably save some money there. Um, but anyways, here's your phone app. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to connect through the same network that you have your um, your game playing at and your your Logitech. So this is all running on my, my home uh, wireless connection. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up the information here the very bottom here if you can see my games I only normally play CSGO on this thing and I've got my G keys here I'll go ahead and I'll push that button it's gonna load up here and it's gonna tell me while sitting on the little cradle don't forget it's gonna remind me what my G keys are doing in case you have something programmed there in case you maybe forgot you did it and you forgot what they are okay well there's your um, your very handy uh, uh, information about what it is that you're looking at for your G keys I don't know you can page through here. You can do some other stuff here. If you want to see your PC stats, this is another uh, key part of this app. Is yeah, go ahead and load up that, and you can actually see how much of your uh, PC is being used, your RAM information, your CPU information, what's kind of going on with it. And as you're playing, you will notice that your your heat is going up, your CPU is being used, your RAM being used, and you have all kinds of stats in there. And um, yeah, I'm not too impressed. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I think this is uh, silly. I'm not going to be using this at all. Uh, what would be nice, uh, instead of your CPU information, uh, for me, I'm not saying for, not for everybody else, but for me, I'd like to see my stats in CSGO. I'd like to see um, what my ping rate is. Um, they have that available, information available. I'd like to see about queues. I'd like to see, you know, maybe something else with the game itself um, maybe I'm being a little bit too specific towards one game but hey uh, you know that's all I care about really um, this is an app that I'm probably not going to be using very much of um, and a feature that I'm probably not going to be using very much of if anything it just sits there and holds your phone it's just not that big of a deal and it's not even uh, it's not even very it's not even very handy I mean you could it's just nothing so uh, do I like the keyboard? I'm going to tell you, I love the keyboard. I've been using it for about a week now, and uh, everything about it is just top-notch. The the key presses, the strokes, everything's great. I do like the lighting. I didn't think I'd like it at first. I didn't think I would care very much about it at first, but I ended up do liking it an awful lot just because it's kind of flashy. And um, while I'm here at home, it's just kind of nice to see uh, my cool keyboard light up there. Um, another thing is the media controls. I will say that I had something similar to this for the very beginning of the video. I showed you my um, older keyboard. I did have this, uh, the older media controls, and um, they still are a huge factor here. I do like to use that an awful lot. Um, I have actually used my macros just a touch, um, but not, not, not too crazy much, but I'm sure that there's going to be other games I'm going to be playing that I will need it. Um, the wrist 
rest here. Um, let me just show you how easy it is to take off. All you do is you just lift up, and there it is. It comes right off, and you can put the lower one on there if you want. If you want to put it back on, all you do is you just put it back on there, and you kind of push it forward, and you're done. It's set. It's, it's not going to move off of there. So uh, overall, great keyboard, great keyboard. I love it a lot. Um, and uh, here's the thing is that I mentioned before, I didn't even know that the division game is still an opportunity for to download and in fact it is so I have my uh, code it's on the other side um, that is good until 1231 2016 so again when the game first came out they advertised all over the place about you get a free download of the division then they stopped advertising it if you look on Amazon website they don't talk about it at all when you get the box there's that sticker on there and inside you get your little sheet of paper here with a code so I've yet to download it but it does say full game included, and I read the little um, kind of uh, restrictions on the back, and they say as long as you do it before 12 31 2016 with a qualified purchase, you know, that's Amazon, you get it. So I'm uh, looking forward to trying out the division. Kind of wish it was Overwatch, but <laughs> anyways, uh, I'll be playing that. So, guys, I hope this helps. Uh, take care for anybody who is interested in this keyboard, it is awesome. Um, Highly recommend it. It's really fast. For those of you who are actually into typing and actually doing things other than gaming too, I can assure you that these little ridges here do not get in my way and I'm able to type really fast on this thing and, and, and I, I feel like it's uh, clicky enough. Does that make sense? Clicky enough? All right. So it's good enough for you to know exactly where you're pushing. Um, it's got a short throw though, so you don't have to spend nearly as much time kind of pressing the keyboards because it's got only about, jeez, uh, I don't remember what it was, but it's a very low throw. Um, you don't have to do very much for it to go and engage and actually get that layer down. Anyways. Take care, guys. We'll see you again in the next video. Please like and subscribe if you like these. Thanks. Bye.